Jorinda and Jorindel. There was once an old castle that stood in the middle of a deep, gloomy wood. And in the castle lived an old fairy. This fairy could take any shape she pleased. She used to fly about in the form of an owl or crept about the country like a cat. But at night, she always became an old woman again. Oh, how I wish I could get rid of these wrinkles and gray hair. But she couldn't. She always remained a grumpy old fairy ruling her castle. When any young man came within a hundred paces of her castle, he became quite fixed and could not move a step till she set him free. Oh, old fairy, please set me free. Don't call me old. I will let you go only if you promise never to return. I'm sorry. I promise I will never come here. But when any maiden came within that space, she was changed into a bird and the fairy locked her into a cage. There were 700 of these cages hanging in the castle and all with beautiful birds in them. Ah, my beautiful bird collection. How spectacular. There was a maiden whose name was Jorinda. Jorindel, a shepherd boy, was very fond of her and they were soon to be married. Ah, these woods are so beautiful, so peaceful. Yes, my dear, they are. But we must be careful that we don't go too close to the castle. <laughs> are you afraid of the old fairy? Jorinda ran inside the woods, teasing Jorindel. They reached at the hilltop. It was a beautiful evening. The last rays of the setting sun shone bright through the long stems of the trees upon the green underwood beneath. And the turtle dove sang from the tall birches. If this isn't heaven, then what is? Jorinda sat down to catch a breath. Jorindel sat by her side and both felt sad. Jorindel, I don't feel so good. Me neither. I feel as if I'm going to lose you. Let's go home. They looked to see which way they should go home. They found themselves at a loss to know what path to take. Oh dear, we are lost. The sun was setting fast. Jorindel on a sudden looked behind him and saw that unknowingly they sat down close under the old walls of the castle. He turned pale in fear. Jorinda was just singing. This is my Jorinda's voice. The ring dun sang from the willow spray. Well a day, well a day. He mourned for the fate of his darling maid. Well a day, well a day. When her song stopped suddenly, Jorindel looked at her and watched her change into a nightingale. An owl with fiery eyes flew around them and three screamed. Jorinda, no, my darling, I'll save you. Jorindel could not move or speak. What has happened to me and my Jorinda? Is there no way out of this misery? And now the sun went quite down. The gloomy night came. The owl flew into a bush. And a moment after, the old fairy came forth with staring eyes. Ah, oh. There is another nightingale for my collection. She mumbled something to herself, seized the nightingale, and went away with it in her hand. Poor Jorindel saw the bird was gone. After some time, the fairy came back and sang with a hoarse voice. Till the prisoner is fast and her doom is past, there stay, oh stay. When the charm is around her and the spell has bound her, hide away, away! Suddenly, Jorindel found himself free. Then he fell on his knees before the fairy and prayed to her to give him back his dear Jorinda. Oh, thank you, dear old fairy. Now also, please free my Jorinda from your charm. <laughs> never. You will never see her again. 
but I won't be able to live without her. Please, I beg of you. But she was unmoved by Jorindel's pleadings, and she just laughed at him and went her way. He prayed, he wept, he sorrowed, but all in vain. Alas, what do I do now? How can I go back home without my beloved Jorinda? Since he could not go back to his own home, he went to a strange village and employed himself in keeping sheep. Many a times he walked round and round as near to the hated castle as he dared go, but all in vain. He heard or saw nothing of Jorinda. Is there no hope for me? One night he dreamt that he found a beautiful purple flower and that in the middle of it lay a precious pearl. And he dreamt that he plucked the flower and went with it in his hand into the castle and that everything he touched with it was disenchanted and that there he found his Jorinda again and that the old fairy looked afraid of the pearl. In the morning, when he awoke, he was hopeful. This dream sure meant something. Maybe I can find my Jorinda after all. So he began to search over hill for this pretty flower, and eight long days he looked for it in vain. But on the ninth day, he found the beautiful purple flower, and in the middle of it was a large dewdrop as big as a precious pearl. There you are. You will help me to find my Jorinda. Then he plucked the flower and set out and traveled day and night till he came again to the castle. He walked nearer than a hundred paces to it, and yet he did not become fixed as before, but found that he could go quite close up to the door. Jorindel was very glad indeed to see this. This flower is indeed magical. Jorinda, here I come. Then he touched the door with the flower and it sprang open so that he went in through the court and listened when he heard so many birds singing. Jorinda must be here. He kept moving. At last he came to the chamber where the fairy sat with the 700 birds singing in the 700 cages. Oh my, so many nightingales. When the fairy saw Jorindel, she was very angry and screamed with rage. How dare you come to my castle? Didn't I tell you to never come back? Now you will pay with your life. She ran to attack him, but she could not come within two yards of him, for the flower he held in his hand was the safeguard. He looked around at the birds, but alas, there were too many nightingales. Where is my Jorinda? While he was thinking what to do, he saw the fairy had taken down one of the cages and was making the best of her way off through the door. Ah, there she is. He ran after her, touched the cage with the flower, and Jorinda stood before him and threw her arms around Jorindel's neck. Then he touched all the other birds with the flower, and they all yay! took their old horns again. Oh, yay! Yay! Woohoo! Yes, thank you! Yay! No! 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 My bird collection! Oh, no! And then Jorindel sprinkled the dewdrop of flour at the old fairy. To their amazement, she turned into a nightingale. Jorinda quickly picked the nightingale and locked it in the cage. It's over, old fairy. Come on, my love, Jorinda. Let's go home. And he took Jorinda home, where they were married and lived happily together. And so did a good many other lads whose maidens had been forced to sing in the old fairy's cages. 